I was probably in the Abe Lincoln meeting when we uh, when we did the interviews, and it vaguely sounds familiar, but uh, I don't recall directly whether he was a a scholarship recipient or just an honoree. Okay, could be the one based on the context, but I imagine he he was a, a scholarship recipient, and his passing was just two months, th two or three months after the scholarship award. Um, but that was one heck of a story. It was. I am I am cautious about the uh, protecting the uh, anonymity of the donor. Uh, and I, I think I left Taylor a note that if she put something in the newsletter to remove any family references, just so that can be protected. And of course, I didn't share the amount of the donation or anything. As a as a team captain for our uh, Catholic Methodist Church virtual kettle and I could get some information uh, but uh, Samantha Hyde at the Salvation Army gave me a, a truncated extracted spreadsheet from the input so I could send email thank yous to those who sent me a, a notice or uh, who, who made donations to our team kettle and uh, she kept in the uh, in honor of or in memory of things it just seemed to be such an interesting name to Google, so I, I Googled it, and wow, what a surprise! Quite a story. For those hey, Robinson, how great to see you! You've been a stranger lately. Yeah, Rob, you and I are among those who probably interviewed her, him. Probably, yeah, I can't say I remember any more than you do, but yeah. That looks good. <laughs> Hi, Rush. How are you? Hello. Hi, Mary. Where's Marge today? Marge is taking her friend in her neighborhood who drives her lots and lots of places to a birthday lunch today. Oh, so cool. she's missing. Good for her. We got our COVID shots yesterday morning. Wonderful. We've got our, we've got our vaccination appointment. Good. You're supposed to wear your badge after you get the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I did. There you go. <laughs> so Mark, how, how, how are you feeling after your shot, Mark? Are you feeling any fatigue or just like a regular flu shot where? Nothing. No, okay, not great. Even, not even a sore arm. It was extremely easy. It was very quick. We were out in, except for the waiting period of 15 minutes, we were out of there in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, from the time we registered till we got the shot and um, they were very friendly. It was very efficient. There were 12 people giving shots. There were five people in the waiting area and they rescheduled us for the second shot at the same time. So it, it was just really, really easy. That was my experience too. I had mine done at the VA on Tuesday and uh, it just flowed so smoothly. And uh, just like you, Mark, I had, if I really pushed on the injection side, I could make it yeah, yeah you, I agree. You, you could do it that. It was a flu shot. Yeah. So, so where did you all go? St. Vincent. Okay. And I went to the VA hospital, but I had an appointment at Community North too, but the VA called and they did it sooner. So I canceled the one at Community after I got the shot, just to make sure it went, opened up the spot for somebody else. Yeah, our, our appointment is at St. Vincent's, and I have to tell you, my three sisters live in deep dark uh, Illinois and Missouri, and they are so envious because we have a plan that's being rolled out. None of them have any idea 
where they can go, when they can go, when the vi when the vaccines will be there. So I'm pretty proud of Indiana for the way they're operating. Yep, good job. So we'll, we'll get started here in, in a minute. I, with with Jay Brill joining us, we hadn't really we hadn't really talked about this, but since we're honoring Mr. Marball, I wouldn't mind having Jay kind of talk about this uh, international interclub that he and Jeff Otis have been spearheading where we're lining up Zooms with Japan, Wyoming, a uh, very, very special place in Georgia. Uh, Jay, would you mind kind of talking about some of the progress that uh, you and Taylor and Jeff and Tina have made? Well, it's uh, really a, a hard act to follow with Joe. Uh, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to see how far we can go and track our mileage and how many countries we can go to. Yeah. So uh, we're going through the logistics to have a uh, meeting in Tokyo. Uh, that would mean that our meeting, if we did the interclub, uh, we would all be uh, staying up until 10 o'clock at night for the interclub. Uh, we also are set up, I think, the 4th of February for the Rocky Mountain Wyoming Club. And you'll see more details in our newsletter. And then as of yesterday, uh, I have confirmation that in March, I think uh, the first Monday, no, the last Monday in March, uh, we're going to be meeting with the Augusta Club and they're going to have a program on the Masters. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to reciprocate and uh, hopefully we can give them a uh, program sometime in May about the Indianapolis 500. So those are the kind of things we're doing. Uh, Jeff uh, is helping me locate uh, the large clubs in North America, Canada, and South America. So uh, we're going to be looking towards doing that. And uh, I think just in these days of COVID, uh, where we can't travel, it would be kind of fun to talk to our fellow Kwanians, uh in other countries, uh, just to find out about their their club, find out about their service projects, their history, and we can uh, see how they're coping with what we're coping with here in Indiana with uh, COVID. So uh, uh, it's just one way to reach out internationally uh, to other Kwanians, and hopefully we'll have a lot of fun with this. You know, we've lost, unfortunately, some of our best contacts with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but I'll bet this is something Jeff Bowles would love to do. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, well, I, I was I was thinking about Mark Miles, but... Uh, Mark uh, also, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we can do that. Uh, the Augusta Club is uh, going to... They're hoping to get a uh, one of the professional golfers to do the program. So we'll we'll see who that is. We can get that too. I bet we could get Mario on a heartbeat. Uh-huh. So uh, I don't know if I'll tell you what the golf golfer's name is or just keep it a surprise. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and start with today's uh, somber welcome back meeting. Uh, I hope you all had a chance to check out the, the football committee's video they did this year. Another great example of uh, the, the club coming together and adapting a long-lived program with an excellent format and in, in, in production. Great job. We are looking forward to being back in person next fall. And again, with the, the worst COVID stats so far this week of cases and fatalities, uh, we are reevaluating a February in-person meeting. We've got some great speakers lined up in February and we're still just reevaluating meeting in person for that one meeting in February. Uh, January 28th, we will be reviewing our bylaws for the first time in six years. So make sure to tune in. Uh, Nancy Ulrich has been doing a, a lot of work behind the scenes, combing through those details and updating where is, is necessary. The nominating committee is seeking officer candidates for board positions and president elect for 2020, 2021 club year starting October 1st. If you're interested or wanna throw someone's name in the hat, 
please email Taylor and Tina at the office email. You may consider making a donation to the club in lieu of paying for lunch today. Any help would be appreciated. So we will move into the candle lighting ceremony. Uh, today we'll be honoring two Kiwanians we lost this year. As we light the candles today, we will reflect remembering their friendships and their service. As we extinguish the candles, we will give thanks for their lasting impact on the community. So uh, anybody who's met Joe Marball, he passed away April 15th, 2020. Uh, I'm sure we'll remember him and his dedication and energy that he brought to the club for the rest of their lives. Uh, Joe was born, sorry. Okay. Joe was born July 28th, 1944 in Indianapolis and he passed away April 15th, 2020. He was a graduate of Cecina High School and he would never let anybody forget. He also graduated from the University of Notre Dame. He spent his career as the owner and CEO of Marball Engineering Supply. He joined Kiwanis October 29, 2003. He loved arranging interclub lunches, assisting with the bell ringing and organizing helpers at weekly lunches. And the, the, the timeliness of his 2019 Kiwanian of the year isn't really lost on anybody. He enjoyed racquetball, Florida, and boating on Geist Reservoir. He survived by two daughters, a son-in-law, two sisters, three nephews, and two grandchildren. Moving on to Joe O'Brien. Born March 6, 1952 on a farm in Manawa, Wisconsin. He passed away June 13th of last year. He was a graduate of the University of Wisconsin. He spent two years in the Peace Corps in Northern India as a dairy extension agent. He moved to Indy in 1978. He worked for Farm Bureau Co-op and Elanco. In 1988, he and his brother purchased a franchise of a local printing company through mergers and hard work, established printing partners, one of the top printers in the Indianapolis area. And I didn't know how much of a role that I played with Kiwanis and how much his generosity had been appreciated in that avenue. They forged a, a corporate identity as a supporter and patron of the arts. He served on the board of directors of the Indianapolis Ballet, the American Pianist Association, Storytelling Arts, and the Indianapolis Violin Competition. He was a homestay host to scores of students studying in Indianapolis and a business and parish mentor. He is survived by his son, I'm sorry, his wife, one son, six brothers and six sisters and his mother-in-law. So we will take a moment to pause for reflection. And as we extinguish the candles, we'll give our thanks for their lasting community commitment. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to the Career and Civic Awards. We'll be introduced by the past presidents who nominated them. The Career Award is given to one of our members who has made exceptional contributions above and beyond 
the usual responsibilities of her business or profession and has demonstrated willingness to devote time and energy to the advancement of her field of endeavor and community. And from my experience with uh, golf committee and uh, K-Kids, if I needed a volunteer to speak to these fourth and fifth graders, Karen would send over someone from the zoo to educate these youngins. And then when I needed donation items for silent auctions, she was the first to do so. So I will turn it over to Steve Willem. Okay, hi, fellow Kiwanians and uh, Karen. Um, our 2020 Career Award honoree leads one of the, I think, most important organizations in our city, culturally, educationally, scientifically, um, a tourism engine and just plain fun. Karen Burns is executive vice president at the Indianapolis Zoo, an organ organization that she has served since 1999. She is responsible for institutional advancement, marketing, membership, creative services, and public relations. Um, I think Karen is on her third CEO at the zoo, and each of them um, have one thing, recognized one thing. We need to keep promoting Karen Burns as she is undoubtedly the one who makes the place go. Um, when I first moved to Indianapolis, um, one of the first things I heard about, about which there was much buzz and excitement and made me think that this was probably a pretty cool place to live, was the building of the new zoo in White River State Park. And in the years since, uh, the zoo has found talented people like Karen and others that have led it to ever greater recognition and accomplishment. Um, it's pioneering work in elephant reproduction, groundbreaking initiatives in research and conservation, the glass observation bubble in the uh, aquarium adventure dome, hosting the Association of Aquariums and Zoos National Conference in 2017, and the International Orangutan Center are just some of the projects and initiatives completed during Karen's tenure. She's executive director of the Indianapolis Prize, which since 2006 has biannually recognized global leaders in animal conservation and highlighted the importance of preserving endangered species. Um, Karen serves on the advisory board to the Salvation Army, just completing a term as its board chair. She's a longtime board member and treasurer at Downtown Indy Inc. And just in case you didn't know, she's also a pretty good Kiwanian too, uh, having served our club on our club's committees and boards for many years, including club president in 2015 and foundation president in 2016. Uh, she's a native Michigander, which I think I still detect a trace of in her voice. Um, she holds degrees from Western Michigan and Grand Valley State Universities. And she is a certified fundraising executive, which in my opinion, makes her eminently overqualified for the role in which many of us have known her in recent years as our organizer and cheerleader for our red kettle bell ringing um, in support of the Salvation Army. So I know circumstances unfortunately prevent our applause from being uh, audible probably, but I know everybody joins me in congratulating Karen as our 2020 Career Award recipient. There we go. Steve, thank you so much for that gracious opening uh, and uh, introduction. And thank you for the nomination because I know uh, that you were responsible for that. Uh, President Eric and everyone on this call, I thank you. And I thank all of the past presidents for this award. And as always, I need to thank my long-suffering husband, Rick Gevers, for his support and encouragement. And uh, 
he's on the call too, so I really had to do that. So, <laughs> uh, you know, this award is is truly special, and um, you couldn't see the print on it, but. It says on it, in recognition of outstanding and exemplary achievement by members of this club in their chosen career and civic endeavors, have with pride selected Karen E. Burns as the 2019-2020 recipient of their career award. It lists the past presidents going back to 1977, because as we know, we have a long history and we couldn't all fit on that page. But it starts uh, with Dr. Jean Cease, and the last name on it is my friend, Jean Ann Kirby. And I am just so very honored by this award. I have truly been blessed to spend my professional career in doing what I love, serving others. Literally, when I paid my way through college as a waitress, through a lifetime of working in nonprofit organizations to my current role and job, it is my plan, God willing, and current director and CEO of the zoo, to retire from the Indianapolis Zoo. I have served as a volunteer and have had the distinct honor to hold several community leadership roles with our club and foundation, the Salvation Army and downtown Indy. And it is true what they say. I have received so much more than I've been given from all of these organizations. And I've met some amazing people, through, people throughout the journey and have forged enduring friendships. Even though we've not been able to meet in person, the ties and friendships with all of you have sustained and uplifted me. This last year has certainly brought challenges that I, like many of you, never expected to face. From the pandemic to the civil unrest in our country and in our city, we have all literally had to fight for our very survival. This past year looms very large to me as I look back on my 40 plus year career. So I hope you'll forgive me if I focus for just a moment on this past year. The zoo closed to the public on March 16th and was able to reopen to the public on June 19th, 12 years later, but under much reduced capacity. My concern for our staff, our vendors, our community partners, and for our visitors certainly dominated my thoughts and actions. When we reopened on June 19th, and of course that's a pretty historic day in and of itself, uh, I witnessed firsthand what the zoo means to families. The stories I heard from visitors, many in tears about how important it was that they were able to bring their children back to the zoo and find some normalcy in the midst of this strange and scary time truly affected me. The challenges faced by our country, city, and neighbors have been daunting. People have lost their jobs and their homes. Many businesses have closed and our beloved downtown is struggling. And all of this reminds me of how very important our civic organizations are to the fabric of our society. Downtown Kiwanis, our foundation, the Salvation Army and Downtown Indy bring optimism and hope. We will rebuild our country and our community because that's who we are. An award like this is certainly cause for reflection. And chief among those for me is that relocating to Indianapolis to work at the Indianapolis Zoo was a turning point that changed my life and my husband's life for the better. I love the Indianapolis Zoo. I love this community. And I love the Kiwanis Club of Indianapolis. So I thank you so much for this honor. Thanks so much, Karen. I mean, I remember when I went back to the zoo the first week it was open and you could tell how excited the animals were <laughs> to see people. And I thought, one of, it shows you how mainly Eric is, I thought one of the flamingos was gonna crawl over the fence and beat me up. It was just so extroverted and excited to come out and see everybody. I don't think I've been beat up by a 20 pound pink bird before, but it was, it, it surprised us all of how um, animated the animals were just to have their guests back. So we will move on to the Civic, Civic Award. Award. Yeah. Based upon the recipient's demonstrated standing as a Kiwanian through committee work, attendance at meetings and cooperation and club activities. Also the recipient must have shown participation above and beyond 
the usual service projects, including work with charitable groups, politics, church work, school activities, and with Rob's work with Action Club. I can't think of anybody more deserving in our club. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Junaine Kirby to introduce our Civic Award winner, Rob Schlegel. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my distinct honor to nominate and share a little bit about this year's Civic Award uh, recipient, our very own Rob Schlegel. I've been fortunate enough to have known Rob for many years by virtue of his friendship first with my parents. It was there I was first able to observe Rob as a business owner, NSB Insurance Carmel, Indiana, there's a plug for business, um, husband to Marcia, father, grandfather to two beautiful twin girls, and that of a true servant leader. Rob has been a member of the Indianapolis Kiwanis Club since 1982. He was president in 1998 and was honored as Kiwanian of the Year in 2002. He's also been awarded the Legion of Honor for his commitment to our club and our Kiwanis community. In April 1994, he, along with Tom Dunham, started the first Action Club of Indiana. This is a Kiwanis sponsored club for mentally and physically challenged adults who have been isolated from the general community. Rob has continued to co-chair this club for more than 25 years. Rob has contributed much of his time to youth and to the youth of our community. He also has worked to integrate Action Club members with K Club and Circle K Club members. He has scheduled picnics and barbecues, dances and other social gatherings these gatherings have helped the Action Club grow socially. Rob is a sustaining Lincoln Fellow and has contributed substantially to the Kiwanis Foundation. Rob is a member of and has served on the board of directors of the City Club of Indianapolis. He is a member of the Columbia Club of Indianapolis. He was president of the Indianapolis JCs from 1976 to 1977. He served as the national vice president of USJCs also from 1976 to 1977. He is a board member of Greater Indianapolis Progress Committee. He is the honorary board member of the 500 Festival Associates, honorary board member of Indianapolis Indians, an honorary board member of the Chamber of Commerce. Rob has been has also been a national, excuse me, a volunteer of the National Sports Festi Festival and volunteer of the U.S. Court, Clay Court Championships. Rob is a longtime member of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and its beautiful choir, and he has even traveled to share his wonderful voice overseas. I am sure I am missing some of Rob's accomplishments, and in reading this, I wonder when he sleeps. Rob has been a tremendous contributor, mentor, friend to our club, to our community, and to those of our disadvantaged friends. These are many of the reasons that Rob has been selected as the Kiwanis of Indianapolis Club's 2020 Civic Award winner. Rob, congratulations. The, the uh, acceptance speech for such a, am I there? We can hear you. Yeah. The acceptance speech for such a prestigious award is, is always the same. So you've all heard what I'm going to say. I sincerely thank Jean Ann for the nomination and all the kind words that she just uh, spoke and the past presidents for choosing me for this unbelievable recognition. There are so many others who deserve this more than I do. And as I think back over my 35 or so years with the best Kiwanis Club in the world, I'm humbled by remembering the great men and women who have served our community so devotedly. That includes Jean Ann's mom and dad, my mentor over the years, Tom Dunham, and many, many others. Many of the men and women who contributed most to the success of this great city were Kiwanians. It is also such a great honor to be on the same program with Karen Burns. Her devotion to her career, our city, and the club has really been amazing. But as I digested the news of the award, I realized that community service has always been at the center of my life. 
when I came in in 1973, as Jean Ann mentioned, I, my, my boss suggested I join the Indianapolis JC. I did, and I just threw myself enthusiastically into all their projects and programs. Served as president, as she said. At that time, the JCs were 500 member club and really very influential, considering the oldest you could be is 36. Really very influential in the city. Worked on nearly every uh, project. My wife, Marcia, and I, are next to me here, chaired the state convention with 3,000 to 3,500 members at the convention. Big time entertainment, Danny and the Juniors, and, and things like that. And then in 1776, we had the 7,000 member attendee National JC Convention. President Gerald Ford was a member, and I got the opportunity to stand at the bottom of the uh, steps at, off of Air Force One and shake the president's hand as he stepped down and then ride the motorcade into town. So that was obviously a, a really big thrill. My kids remember my time selling corn out of the state fair. JC's used to call it JC Super Corn. And most of the time, I'd take the megaphone and, and yell out and get people to come. But the year that I was president of the JCs, I was out there all 13 or 14 days of the fair. And so I found out they were going to give me a trophy in a coming meeting. And I thought, oh, you know, they're going to give me a nice trophy for all the time I put in. It turned out the trophy had a pig on the top of it to uh, commemorate all the corn I ate while I was out there. <laughs> well, as Janine said, said, I had the opportunity to serve on many Indianapolis committees, the Gypsy, the Chamber, the 500 Festival, and my favorite, the Indianapolis Indian Board. With the 500 Festival, Marsha and I worked on the mini marathon. I chaired that a couple of years. We so, uh, hosted celebrities and, and many other things. Uh, in the USJCs in 1980, I served as one of 10 national vice presidents and the USJCs had five or 600,000 members back there and was really significant. But when I got too old for JCs, I needed another outlet for my activity in the community, which I just love. I looked up my friend, John Sutton, and asked him to bring me to downtown Kiwanis Club because I knew that I would find a lot of my JC friends had moved to that club, to this club. I won't take a long time to rehash all of my Kiwanis activities. Many of you were there with me, and there really are not very many programs over the however many years that, uh, that I missed somewhere along the line. Archman Middle School, 20 years of Abe Lincoln, uh, most recently the football luncheon, and uh, so many more. I served as president of the club when we had about 500 members and loved every minute of it. My board of directors included many of the movers and shakers of this town. And of course, as has been mentioned a few times, I also have been really devoted to our Capital City Action Club since 1994 when Tom and I scoured the city to find a social service organization to co-sponsor it. We actually might not have ever found one were it not for the fact that George Gallion, former member of this club, was the vice president of Goodwill Industries, and he got Goodwill to, to be our co-sponsor. Ted Mao, Steve Robinson, Rush Elberton, uh, and many of the others that are even on this call now have helped substantially with the Action Club, but we could use more. Anybody else that's interested, even in just coming to a meeting, we'd love to have you when we can have meetings again. Outside of Kiwanis, I volunteered. Uh, Jean Ann mentioned a number of the things, but basically every major golf tournament, church choir, I saw, now serve on the board of directors of Carmel Symphony Orchestra, and I continue my service through this club. I was in the Zoom meeting last Saturday for, for the Abe Lincoln Awards, and I still love everything that happens in this club. I don't mention any of these things to brag, but just to underline the fact that community service can be so rewarding. Most of the friends, practically all of the friends that I have, I met through community service and most of them through this Kiwanis Club. One day I was walking with a friend a number of years ago across Monument Circle and um, 
stopped many times to, to say hello to people like Greg Fennig and Mary Marsh and Nancy Allrakes and Nancy Summers, um, Mark Varnell, Jay Brill, Max Shoemaker. And we got to the point where the friend turned to me and he said, is there anyone in this town you don't know? <laughs> and it was, you know, purely because of, of the civic organization, the community service that, that I had experienced. Mostly, I want to thank the love of my life for 51 years, my wife, Marcia. Every hour that I put in, she's put in, many times at my side, sometimes at home, waiting for me to get back. She's always supported me, and I really appreciate that. I want to close with a couple lines from the J.C. Creed. That's a beautiful document, but the first line is, we believe that faith in God gives meaning and purpose to human life. And the final line is, and that service to humanity is the best work of life. Thank you. Oh. Thanks so much, Rob. Um, just, just to kind of publicly pick your brain for, for two seconds, with, with your experience on the, on the football committee and just a tremendous success, uh, you know, with the participation from the Colts and adapting to a video format this year, what would be your guidance for the, the basketball program this spring? What, 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 what did you learn adapting it this fall that you think the basketball committee could learn from? Well, if it has to be uh, virtual, as the football was, then I would say call the same videographer that we used because okay. he did a mm. great job. And, um, and Chuck Cotterman and Taylor, uh, especially those two, but also everybody on the committee worked really hard to put everything together. Those of you who have watched it or have been there in past years know that Kyle Needenrip, who just won the award as the uh, outstanding sports writer in the state of Indiana, who reports on high school basketball and football was our MC and he does a terrific job. When I first called him five or six years ago and asked him to do it, he said, well, you know, I'm not really an on-air personality. I, I'm, I write, I don't really give speeches. Well, he's done as well or better than any on-air personality could have done. So put together the right ingredients. That's the summation of my, uh, my response. Oh, and, and, and you've certainly done that. You certainly Colts, done that. We, we, we cut with the Colts. I, I have to say that we got a little bit lucky. We were out mm. of the fairgrounds four, five years ago. And Pete Ward, who I've known over the years, uh, came up to me afterwards and he said, hey, and they were always a co-sponsor, but that was really all they did. But he was there that day and he came up and he said, you know, we're building this new pavilion out here. Uh, would you consider moving it out there? And of course, I had to not jump out of my chair because it was such a great opportunity and it is a great opportunity it's wonderful out there and we certainly want to go back there we don't want any more online presentations no, i can't wait to get back out there i think everyone's jaw hit the floor when andrew luck came out a couple of years ago and yeah. graced all the high school's memories for the, for the rest of their known lives so again rob thanks to you thanks for your wife and her support I think Lamita does 55 minutes of work for every hour that I do. So I like seeing how you all have continued that as long as you have. So we will move on to the, the perfect attendance winners. Uh, Mr. Jason Burke and Mr. Duke Haddad celebrating one year. Well done to you both. And once we get past the, the 10 years and up, Diane and Mary and Lou and Bob and Tom and Tom Dunham, I'm going to ask that you all just speak for a few seconds and maybe touch on some of the things that you remember over your tenure. And for, for Tom, for, 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 really for the two Toms, I'll recognize you all. Um, let's see, no, I, I thought your Legion of Honor also, but no, we'll work through the, the, the attendance. Well, so Jason Burke and Duke had at at one year. And uh, I believe Taylor has mailed out your awards and uh, Graham and myself for two years. I'm excited about my free coupon to the Columbia Club for lunch. Carol Orbison and Mr. David Young, four years of perfect attendance. 
And again, these are members based on attending a large percentage of the number of meetings held, points included in this count, meeting help, committee work, board work, and other Kiwanis activities. The, the five-year perfect attendance winners, Mr. Roger Cummings, Ms. Jean Ann, Kirby, six years, Bill Du Bois and Miss Jamie Smith, seven years, Trina. I feel like for the, the seven years of Trina, it's kind of like an exponential, you know, seven to the second power where she's actually put in 49 years of work in those seven years. So thank you so much, Trina, for the hundreds and hundreds of hours of work you do each year for the club. Chuck Cotterman celebrating eight years. Thanks for your leadership also. So Miss Diane Nichols celebrating 13 years. Uh, if you don't mind just saying a couple words uh, briefly. Unmute. Okay, now can you there hear me? Go. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Kiwanis is a, a fantastic experience for anyone in the corporate world, uh, and then even after. Um, I've uh, participated in quite a few things while, while I'm there, but I think the, um, my, my love of the Abe Lincoln program uh, is the greatest. And to have had that experience that I would never have had without uh, Kiwanis, um, it is, has just filled my heart every time, every year. And uh, to know uh, that the people, you know, in this club uh, are responsible for that. And the love that they show is just incredible. And um, I just appreciate, you know, all of you and all of the work that you have done. And my congratulations to Karen and Rob. And uh, I'd like to thank you for all of those experiences. Well, thanks for all your hard work and your, your, your contributions to us and to the city. I get to hear as much about your Kiwanis work as your Salvation Army work from, from Don. So if you think she's something at Kiwanis, you should see your Salvation Army. So thanks again for everything you do for the, the community. And celebrating 19 years of perfect attendance, Mrs. Mary Marsh. Uh, no, um, I, it has been a privilege, absolute privilege to be a member of this club for more years than that, but to attend for 19 years in perfect <laughs> attendance. I especially want to thank uh, Taylor and Tina and uh, Graham and Eric and Trina and all the people who made this year's perfect attendance possible through these video Zooms. Um, it's been wonderful to keep uh, in touch with each other and to keep connected and to keep doing the work we do. And uh, I'm anxious to get back to the Columbia Club, but I have thoroughly appreciated being able to connect once a week with all the lovely friends I have at Kiwanis. So, so then Mary, just to kind of put you on the spot, have we heard, do you have any idea what the Indians are gonna do, the Indianapolis Indians are gonna do this year where, is there, is, there, is there a chance of getting us back out for, for, for softball or are they kind of postponed until indefinitely? Well, there no, the, the Indians are hoping to have a season. Uh, it's rather controlled by MLB, um, okay. the major leagues. So they have to, they call the shots and make the final decisions, but we are hoping very much to put a, a team on the field. And if we do open up and I very much hope and, and think we will, um, then we'll work at trying to keep our Kiwanis Rotary game going. So we'll we'll make every effort to do that. Okay. No. 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 Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, and then Lou Drexler. I don't see Lou on the call. Uh, celebrating 23 years. I love getting to know Lou through him coming out to the golf outings and with his participation in his, his committees for so long. Uh, for 26 years, Mr. Bob Baxter. And I'm not sure Bob is on the call today. And then uh, Mr. Tom Eubank, if you wouldn't mind saying a, a couple of words, celebrating 44 years. Thank you.
Uh, fine. I think I got unmuted. We can hear uh, you. I'm, I'm always one year behind Tom Dunham. And I hope hope we uh, continue that for a, for a long time. Um, I am ahead of him in uh, total Kiwanis membership. Uh, this uh, next uh, July will be 55 years uh, of Kiwanis. Um, 10 years in uh, previous clubs and then It'd be 45 years in the downtown club. And um, I just have to echo what others have said. Uh, it's been a great experience. Um, my late wife asked me once, well, when will you be uh, finished with Kiwanis? And I said, uh, never. <laughs> uh, I'll be a Kiwanian until the day I die, I hope. So uh, try for another year's uh, perfect attendance next year. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Tom. And the, the, the winner, Tom Dunham, of today's Perfect Tenants Awards, celebrating 45 years. If you wouldn't mind, just saying a few words, please. Now yeah, we've got the voice. I just want to tell you, it's been a, just a wonderful experience for 45 years belonging to Kiwanis and all the opportunities I've had and all the friends I've made. And particularly when uh, uh, I got a little more involved uh, in the district as governor and prior to that and visited many, many clubs, maybe all of them throughout uh, the, um, uh, the district, the Indiana district and made so many friends there. And then I was uh, privileged uh, down the road to uh, be president of the Qantas International Foundation. And I made more friends uh, throughout the world. And some I still maintain contact with. And it's just been a wonderful experience for me and it continues to be. No, I'm not as active near as I used to be, a little bit in action club and a little bit with adaptive bikes and uh, things like that. But uh, I've slowed down a lot, a lot more now. But uh, I have really enjoyed myself and I just uh, thank uh, God for the privilege to have been a Kiwanian for uh, all these years and hope to continue that. Thank you very much. Oh, certainly, Tom. So you mentioned the Kiwanis International Foundation, keeping in touch with some of your friends. As Jay builds out this uh, international interclub, is there any place in particular you want us to look up? Well, there might be. I'd have to think about that a while. Okay. And and uh, get back to you. absolutely all right. Yeah. all right thanks tom so moving on next the ruby k achievement awards ruby k our new member recruitment awards are awarded after sponsoring new members over a period of years they're awarded for 5 10 15 or 20 new members and then in increments of 10 the following members are entitled to receive ruby k awards for the year 2019 to 2020. I think that's easily the best picture for our, I've ever seen for our first recipient, Mr. Jeff Otis. If you wouldn't mind just saying a couple of words about your passion for Kiwanis. I'm gonna say that's, uh, you know, back in the day when we used to wear uh, ties to work. Um, yeah, Taylor and Tina, I, I received my pin. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say I uh, appreciate, uh, you know, there's a lot of people on this call. I was thinking this is um, coming up on my 20th year as a member of this club. Uh, Steve Robinson was the president my first year. That's how long it's been, Steve. Um, and uh, there are a lot of people on this call that have been uh, around a lot longer than I have. And I've been there 20 years and it's kind of embarrassing. I can't string together a single year of perfect attendance and I work for you. So um I, uh, I prop this club up as, um, as um, an example of a century old uh, club that is able to adapt and uh, I'm heartened by the fact that uh, you know, during this pandemic, um, we uh, easily made, and I say easily, I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but from my perspective, easily made the jump to um, online meetings. They've been great meetings. We've had speakers that we uh, otherwise would never have had. And, uh, you know, I always say if, uh, you know, 100 and 
you know, four-year-old uh, club can do it, uh, your club can, and a lot of our clubs have uh, quite honestly made that um, uh, adapted and, and made do uh, in the pandemic. So anyway, just want to thank all of you for uh, everything you do um, for the uh, club, have done and will continue to do, and uh, appreciate everybody being uh, adaptable during the uh, pandemic. Thanks, Jeff. I always love hearing you, you speak. Your, your passion really just comes through with every word where you're not being braggadocious. It's just uh, sincere and heartfelt. So, um, Mike Hallsteed, how do you pronounce that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, for 15 new members, uh, Mr. Michael, if you don't mind saying a couple words. Well, I brought my pen too, Jeff. So I got mine in the mail. So I got that. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed. Uh, after all these great uh, lifetime achievement awards to be talking about, you know, the Ruby D and getting a, a few people to become members of the world's greatest Kiwanis club. But uh, having said that, uh, when I was president, I made sure every lunch program that I mentioned, we were the world's greatest Kiwanis club at the beginning and the end. And I really feel we are it's because of all the people on this phone call today and all the people who made this uh, such a great club. Having said that, um, Karen, I got to tell you this story. I tried to Snapchat you, but uh, while we were talking, but Taylor says I only sent it to her. But my granddaughter, Ridley, who's two and a half now, she loves going to the zoo. And she's been three times and she never stops talking about it. So much so that when she does come over, I have to uh, stock up on the animal crackers because she loves to play this game where we eat animal crackers and talk about all the animals that she saw at the zoo. So. Thanks, everybody. Have a great, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Mike. And again, always, always quick with a donation. And Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing that uh, world's greatest Kiwanis Club finish. I'd heard uh, Graham and Blythe use that verbiage in particular, so I am gonna beat that into the ground for the next nine months. So, moving on to the Legion of Honor. Kiwanis International recognizes with membership in the Legion of Honor those Kiwanians who have been faithful members for at least 25 years. There are thousands of Kiwanis, Kiwanis Legion of Honor members. By their dedication, service, and contributions to a better world, they honor all Kiwanians. Today, we will recognize 15 members who have reached these milestones. I see about a half dozen who are on the call today, so that's, uh, that's wonderful. So, uh, Miss Evelyn Sayers Eldridge, one of my favorite uh, passionate golfers. Uh, Mrs. Eldridge, if you wouldn't mind just saying a couple words about your, your history with Kiwanis. I guess I have to unmute that. I would just like to very much thank R.G. Moorhead and Vanna Lawman for recommending me for membership years and years ago. And also in honor of Joe Marva, I would like to say that when I walked into the athletic club and didn't quite know where to go or what to do, I ran into Joe and he said, come with me. And he asked me to sit at the culture table. And for the old time members, you remember what an honor it was to be asked to sit at the culture table. So I, I would remember those members and what they did for us. And I hope to uh, continue for many more years. All right, thanks, Evelyn. We hope to have you for many more years. Thank you. Mr. Robert Gardner and Eric Rowland, uh, 25 years, 30. We've got Mr. Tom Crandall, Mr. Bill Perkins. And on the call today, we've got 30 year member, Mr. Steve Robinson. If you wouldn't mind just saying a couple of words, please. Hey guys, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Um, sorry, I haven't been around hardly at all lately. I've been working through some personal matters and I'm actually taking a sabbatical from work right now. Um, but uh, I wanted to be on this call today because I wanted to see everybody. And uh, you've become some of my best friends um, that I've known. Kiwanis has been a great organization. Um, I've enjoyed my time there. Uh, I, I really uh, appreciate everything that Kiwanis has done for me. Um, I hope I can, in the future I can start giving back more. 
but uh, good to see you all. Congratulations, Karen. Um, that was well-meaning. Rob, congratulations to you too. Uh, that was uh, well-deserved. All right, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Celebrating 35 years, we've got Eugene Schulstad. Uh, 40 years, we've got Mr. John T. Lepper on the call today. If John wouldn't mind saying a couple words, it'd be great to hear from him. Well, thank you for this honor. I really appreciate it. Am I on? You are. We can hear you. Okay. <laughs> thank you for this honor. I really appreciate it. I'm I apologize for not being a regular attendee, but I'm sure proud of everything that you do uh, for the city of Indianapolis. Thank you. I appreciate you keeping it brief, John. Thank you very much. We're getting close to, to winding down, so I appreciate that very much. A 40-year member, uh, Mr. Mark Varnow, if you wouldn't mind saying a couple words. Well, I go all the way back to the time when your grandfather uh, was active and then president of the club. And so I've gone through three steel presidencies and maybe I'll go through your grandchildren's, who knows? Three <laughs> kidney stones, three steel. Uh, John Sturman and Mo Thomas were my sponsors. And I was really delighted to become a member of downtown Qantas. Uh, we all met at the athletic club as many of you remember and used to fill that hall with uh, lunchtime attendees. It was. It was a wonderful, exciting time. And uh, I'm, I'm like Steve, I haven't been very active for a number of years as I got more involved with that food pantry. <laughs> it, it became a full-time volunteer job. And uh, so it, it kind of took my time, but it, it's still regretfully prospering. I wish we didn't have to have it, but we do. And um, uh, I enjoyed my time in couple of offices and committees and uh, it, it, it's really been good. So it, it's a wonderful 40 years to have been involved with this great organization. And I too congratulate Karen and Rob, well-deserved. Thanks. All right, thanks, Mark. So uh, moving on to the 45 year milestones. Uh, Jay, since we heard from you earlier, congratulations, but we're not gonna give you your, your breakout session. So Jay, thank you very much. Hope to have you for another 45 years. Uh, James, uh, Jim Blythe, 45 years. William Neal, 50 year members. We've got Donald Tanzel, 55 years. Thomas Grinslade and James Plummer. Can we hear from Bill Neal? Only if you want to. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I, I've lived through three steals as well, um, and all of them great guys. No, I, this has been a long time association, obviously. Um, I was, uh, my I'm a legacy, my dad was a member of Kiwanis. Uh, my late uncle, Charlie Cruz, introduced me and was my sponsor. Uh, like Tom Eubank, I started my Kiwanis uh, connection back in high school when I served three years in Key Club. Um, as Rob mentioned, you go around town and you just run into Kiwanis Kwanians all over the place. And I have for years. And a lot of the people on this call are some of those people I run into. When we used to have basketball games in person, I used to run into Mary and to Rob at the Butler games. Um, one highlight that I would mention over the years uh, for this club was when we were able to get Kiwanis International to move here and locate in Indianapolis. And for those of you who don't know the story, um, Kiwanis had been in Chicago for many years. They lost their lease. Chicago didn't even try to keep them for some reason. They had a search committee and they had almost decided on, if I remember correctly, Kansas City, when we found out that they were actually going to move. Alan Hicks, who was president of Community Hospital, was also president of the club at the time. And he said, we should see if we can try to get them to come here. So I think they made a courtesy visit just because we were the largest club in the world. They sent one of the members of the search committee and we wowed him over a couple of days. He went back and recommended that they take a close look at Indianapolis. One of the things though, that was a, uh, a prerequisite for them was that any location they moved to had to have buried power lines. So you couldn't see power lines as you were driving past Kiwanis. That was a hundred thousand dollar 
uh, price tag here in Indianapolis. Our club had a series of meetings and we raised $100,000 in order to get them to come here when $100,000 was a lot of money. And uh, it's been a great association, obviously a great thing for the city. I remember um, we did a, a, a video uh, promoting this thing of, for people to give money. And Jim Morris said, this is the best kind of industry that it is. It does good work and it doesn't pollute. So again, of all of the years, I think that's probably the thing that I would, would say where our club has made a really lasting impact. Obviously, Abe Link and all the other things, but in terms of a unique project, it would be Kiwanis International. Thanks for the award. I appreciate it. Next time you're driving by the Kiwanis office on 465, just look over. You'll see the power lines disappear at our proper line. Exactly. And then they pop up on the at the end of it. That's beautiful. Uh, but, but before we get to Jeanne's special award, I'm going to turn it over to Rush Yelverton, who found an interesting story on one of our 1997 um, Abe Lincoln recipients. And we're going to go two minutes over. If you have to jump off, we appreciate you joining today. Yeah, uh, just very quickly, uh, our Castleton Methodist Church uh, that Annie and I have been part of for years, has for years done bell ringing along with uh, Qantas, just like we've done at local Kroger. Uh, this year we did a virtual bell only. And in getting a list of the uh, donors, I uh, had a truncated spreadsheet that just had certain information on it. And there was one don anonymous donor who had made a donation in honor of Dr. Chad Marvel. Uh, that was such an intriguing title that I decided to Google the name, and lo and behold, I found that Chad Marvel uh, was a uh, Abe Lincoln scholar in 1997. Uh, he passed away about two months after receiving the award. Uh, he had uh, uh, leukemia, was treated at Riley. He was so involved in his treatment and other things over the many years that the doctors there chose to give him a true doctor uh, certificate. And that was awarded to him about a week before he passed away. But just seeing that story and the linkage to uh, Abe Lincoln and the members that that brought were just so special that I've shared it with a number of people. No, I appreciate that, Rush. So getting to know you through Kiwanis and also with your dedication to the Salvation Army, um, I think we've become friends. And it, it, it's ironic. I've told some of the other Kiwanians this. I actually grew up with Chad Marvel. We played on the golf team together. We graduated from the same class at Lawrence North. We were in every academic class for six years at Craig Middle School into Lawrence North. I played saxophone for six years. He was in band. He was a little better than I was. But um, that, yeah, that, that, that connection with the, the sentimentality of today's meeting uh, really had me kind of fighting back tears. So thanks again, Rush, for your commitment to the club and uh, bringing that touching story to our attention. Uh, lastly, a special award presented to Jeannie Ann Kirby for all her hard work as foundation president this past year. We thank you for your dedication and service. She's also going to stay on the board for another five-year term. We're also excited that Graham is now our 2021 Kiwanis Foundation President. Your awards have all been mailed to you. Let the Kiwanis office know if you do not receive yours yet. Yeah. Jeanne, you want to say a quick thank you or goodbye for your, your term as Foundation President? Hey, there we go. Yay. Great. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. I have been really blessed to work alongside some of the neatest, most wonderful people on the planet. Um, I'm just blessed by your friendship and by the opportunity to uh, work with you to do some great work in our community. So thank you so much. I look forward to volunteering on the foundation for another number of years. All right, thanks, Jeanne. So uh, again, Jeanne's uh, dedication to the, the, the golf scramble, the, the, the fundraising efforts there. Uh, Jeanne, as my thank you, you've got a case of uh, Skinny Girl Margaritas. <laughs> Head into your home address. Uh, pl please join us next week. Our guest will be Dr. Thomas Duzinski, IU Director of Epidemiology 
education, talking about COVID-19. That being said, thank you so much for the work behind the scenes that had today's uh, meeting go off without, without a hitch. Thanks to everybody who took time out of the day to join us. And I look forward to seeing everybody next week. The meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.